And it's the three-man panel that you have come to know, love, and trust. The guys helping you dominate your fantasy football league each and every week. Jeff, Jesse, and Yeasty. Guys, it's so, it's so good to be back on the set. The three of us. This just feels like the way it should be, realistically. It's a little bit of home, man. Brotherhood on the show. around Rallying around the time-honor tradition of NFL football. It is good. It, it's, it's wonderful. It's definitely good, and, and, and I know that this season has brought a special meaning to the Yeast as well. As his favorite team, he's rocking the Bernie Kosar jersey here yeah. for us all. His favorite team has seen a return to prominence this year, the Cleveland Browns. We usually start each segment with a great fantasy game, and usually the Browns are pushed down there like, hey, man, if we can't get to one, let's just leave the Browns game off. Yeah, this but this matchup. year, the Browns are for real dropping bombs. Derek That's Anderson, true. Braylon Edwards, even Jamal Lewis, fantasy prominence. So let's start off this on, segment. Crazy. Cleveland <laughs> at Arizona, yeasty fantasy matchups just galore here yeah i think you've got to start pretty much everybody um if you if you have them i mean edgerin jamal lewis kurt warner has been popping like crazy Derek anderson kellen winslow braylon edwards they're all must starts every week at this point uh unless you have arizona defense and you were going with that for the last few weeks based on their turnovers adrian wilson is out so i, I see a lot of points in this matchup all over yeah, me too. I mean, with just the fact that uh, all world free safety, Adrian Wilson, is injured now, been put on IR, the, there's going to be points galore in this game. So it's going to be great. I, I'm excited to see Kellen Winslow uh, do his thing in this game. I think that's going to be good. And the Browns, they're all popping. You can't really start their defense because they suck, but that bodes well for this uh, fantasy matchup. That's Even true. Phil Dawson is a nice kicker for your team. Yeah. yeah, I just picked up Phil Dawson in the Tough League the other day. I I'm going to roll with uh, Nick Folk for the meantime, but... Dawson, good reserve kicker there, and, and, you know, he's definitely in play, as is the kicker on the other side who missed a painful <laughs> overtime kick last week. Of course, I'm talking about Neil Rackers. Nice Rackers was not able to come through in the clutch. However, Arizona's fantasy players were great last week. Warner, 490 yards yeah, passing roughly. Yeah. He's been 56, blowing up lately. Above 56 and 2 to, to Larry Fitzgerald. Nice to see the local boy doing good. Um, he's actually being targeted the most in the NFL right now. 126 times he's been thrown to, and he dealt with a, a little bit of injury grizzle early on in the season. He's yep. really come back. Yep. And that one touchdown he caught was a Hail Mary yeah, in the end yeah. zone. was an amazing catch. So and make it I, I think he makes a great play here this weekend. <laughs> exactly. You see, you've got Bolden in the tough league. Yep. Are you going to roll Bolden out here in this match? If I know you also got edge, what are you, what are you thinking here? I'm going to have to study it. I'll probably go with one or the other because I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket mm -hmm. um, just in case something happens. Warner gets hurt and Tim Rattay has to come in or something. Um, so I'll go with one or the other. I have to look at the other matchups. I'm leaning towards probably edge at this point and starting Wes Welker as the one receiver that I have to start in the well, tough league. So. Now let's get personal here for a minute, man. <laughs> this is a big matchup for you in the tough league. Not really. Well, I'm, I'm playing Hollywood. You're dude. coming back from the dirt nap, dude. It's like, you know, you were a little well, bit dead and now all of a sudden you've got a heartbeat. The points were always couple there. Couple of wins here. Just needed a couple of things to fall How my way. How are you feeling so. right now, man? I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited. We'll see. I, I could be crushed next week sitting here, you know. Right. With tears in my eyes and everything else. But, you know, I've got the talent. I think the, the three best teams in the league are all sitting right here. And we'll hopefully we'll all be in the playoffs by the time it rolls I, around. I, I think it's a foregone conclusion, to be honest with you. Sorry, Charlie. But uh, just a matter of time, realistically. But w when I look at this matchup, Cleveland against Arizona, probably one of the most surprising things to me here in this matchup. Yeah, uh, Cleveland's passing game is pretty prolific. And we, we really didn't see anything uh, like this coming from uh, – from them, but realistically, the return of prominence by Jamal Lewis has been pretty striking. I mean, he's really played well of late, and I, I mean, he's a must play again for fantasy owners. Yeah, I think against the Arizona defense, he does play much better at home than he does on the road, and this game is at Arizona. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they've, they're pretty soft, and they're banged up on the, defense, on the defensive side of the ball right now, and, you know, it makes Phil, Sa Phil Savage and the rest of the Browns brass look pretty smart for taking Joe Thomas at number three because that line is developing into yep. one of the best in the league. So as much as I bitched about it when it all happened and I wanted AP and I was complaining, blah, right, blah, blah, right. I knew deep down Joe Thomas was a smart pick. And, For sure. You know, long term, you like the flashy guys, but the guys getting it done in the trenches are what's mm -hmm. making Derek Anderson be able to get the ball to Braylon Edwards and Kellen Winslow. So, yeah, they're, they're looking good, and they're looking, looking good for the future as well. The big, the big aspect for me about, about this team has been the, the 
kind of stamp that Romeo Cornell has really put on this team. He's, he's got his team believing in his system. Yep. He's made a real difference there uh, attitudinally, and, and it's coming around. And I know their defense hasn't really come around yet, but I think that they will. And, I, and for my money, I think that uh, if, if it's not Mike Tomlin in Pittsburgh, it's Romeo Cornell for Coach of the Year in the AFC. I think it's tough to argue with that, really, Jeff. I mean, they've come out of nowhere. Their offense is clicking. Derek Anderson's a top three quarterback yeah. in fantasy. He's got to be in your lineup here. And, you know, Romeo's, our, our hats definitely go yeah. off to him. I know the Cleveland faithful have been waiting a long time for some hope to hang Dog pound is back. Is, is this turning into a Brown segment? I know we have the I'm Purple segment. That I'm never allowed on because I hate the purple, evidently. <laughs> but I think this is a Brown segment. I You've been like so it. surly about the Browns for so long that I decided to be the Browns pimp, the testosterone official. You got anything I'm to say about that? I'm not surly. I'm a realist. When your team disappears for four years, you just become a realist. Or, or 40. In any, the any, of the junkies, <laughs> any of the junkies that have been on to our website at testosteronesports.com and have clicked on to my writer's page have seen not only have I jumped fully onto mm. the Browns bandwagon, but back about three, four weeks ago, I wrote a little piece called Lucky Number 13. I told you that Kurt Warner was going to return to fantasy glory, and here he is. He's one of the best fantasy yeah. quarterbacks in the league, and I think that's going to continue specifically in this matchup. So let's jump ahead to the next one, a marquee game in the NFL slate of action this week. The Jacksonville Jaguars travel to Indianapolis to face the Colts. Guys, a division rivalry that really has, has a lot of uh, upset potential here in my opinion. Jacksonville routed Indy last year in week 14, hung 44 points on this team. Yeah. So Jeff, I want to know, is Indy cracking here? Is this the game where Jacksonville finally grabs this division? Well, I'm telling you that it, I, I was going to call this my upset special of the week, you know, but of course, you know, it really doesn't seem like it would be that monumental of a of a defeat here, you know, considering the way that Jacksonville has been able to put up numbers against this Indianapolis team. Here again, you're seeing a team uh, dealing with a lot of injury problems. Um, they, they've got a nice team, but not having Harrison there and, and having uh, Dallas Clark, who's one strong hit away from seeing the sidelines for six weeks, I think it's going to be a low-scoring affair, and it makes me nervous for anybody who's really depending heavily on Joseph Adai here in this game. What do you think, East? How's, how's I this shake out? I actually think that Indianapolis has developed into the kind of team that can that can take out Jacksonville at their own game now. As we saw in the Monday night game a few weeks ago when they went down there and just basically walked all over the field with them. Marvin Harrison wasn't in that game either, wasn't mm -hmm. a factor in that game. I just think they're the type of team they've kind of tweaked themselves for that division to take on Tennessee and Jacksonville, and I think that Indianapolis actually rolls in this game. Okay, interesting. I, I tend to think this game's going to be a little bit more of a slugfest. Don't you, right. you have Peyton Manning in the Tuck League? Hey, call it call it what you will. I think Indianapolis <laughs> is going to roll in. Who's your game. number one running back in that league? Yeah, uh, that guy right there. Oh, so he's a Colt. There could be a little taste of biasness we'll just here, call, but we'll see next week. We'll but see from next a, week. from a fantasy perspective, I think blue I think the Jaguars realistically, Fred Taylor finally got off last week. I don't expect him to do that again. He finally had a good game for you. Keep him out of your lineup. From a fantasy perspective, Jacksonville seems to be Maurice Jones-Drew, and that's just about it as far as a fantasy option. And for the Colts, you probably go Manning, Adai, Reggie Wayne, maybe Clark if he's yeah, healthy. Yeah. But if Harrison comes back, don't you think you still have to leave him on the bench, Jeffrey? Well, you know, it's tough to say. He's got that nagging knee injury, and he's older, you know. And as those guys get older, you know, you mentioned Fred Taylor, who's another old player, finally got a chance to get off. As they get older, they can't get off nearly as often. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm just saying I think that it, it, it's going to be tricky. He'll have a lot of rust. And when Harrison does finally come back on the field, I think they're going to want to ease him in. And I think they're reserving him, too, you know, for their playoff push. I sang a little Viva Viagra there. I thought Yeasty was going to pull his banjo out. Well, uh, you know, Yeasty would rise to the occasion. <laughs> no, come on now. Come on now. Okay, the next matchup, Seattle traveling to Philadelphia to face an Eagles team that, of course, is going through another controversy here. Is Donovan McNabb the starting quarterback if he's healthy? Andy Reid says he is, but the Eagles played a hell of a ball game last week on Sunday night. Definitely a, a game that they were jacked up for. They were, they were 23 points deficit when, when you talk about Vegas' line. I think they came into that game against New England with the chip on their shoulder. And Philly still has a chance at the playoffs here, Yeasty. I, I don't know. I, I like Philly at home against Seattle. I think Philly matches up well with Seattle. I think that A.J. Philly, the way that he manages the game and the way that he throws the ball and can find the receivers on the quick, quick routes that they need to, uh, he's a great fit. And I think he makes an actually a very good play this week if you had Donovan McNabb or if you have a bad matchup. I think A.J. Philly can definitely be a good start this week. 
So, you know, in my opinion, the way you beat the Eagles is you run up the gut at them, you know, smack them in the mouth right away. And, and without a Sean Alexander up the gut type of a mentality, I just don't see the Seahawks having the stones to get this game done. Although I do like Hasselbeck in the passing game, yep. I just don't think that they're going to be able to have it enough at the end to face a team and to win uh, against a team that's so prideful. And now the Eagles, like us, are thinking the P word. Yeah, they really are. I mean, so. they, they're they definitely in the hunt for the playoffs. They're playmaker. It's no, no mistake. Ryan Westbrook, he does everything in most formats out there. He's the number one fantasy yeah. running back. you got to keep him in your lineup. But uh, on a wide receiver tip, the guy I really like in this game is not Kevin Curtis, none of the Eagles, but I really like Deion Branch. I've been, I've been harping on Branch all season. He was out for a couple weeks with injury. Now he came back last week, had a good yardage game and a touchdown, but here goes. DJ Hackett's out again with an injury. So I think Branch really steps to the forefront here because realistically, Seattle can't run the ball at all. Yeah, I don't know how well they're going to be able to move the ball. It's going to have to be through the air if they do. And I just, that Eagles secondary is so tough. We mm -hmm. saw them bottle up New England last week, and you know, I worry about that matchup a little bit. But if it is going to be anybody, it looks like it's going to be Deion Branch. He popped off well last week. And, um, you know, if, if they are going to do anything, it's going to be Deion Branch through the air. Jeff, what do you think about either of the Philly receivers in this matchup? Well, you know, I think it's going to be tough going. Uh, Seattle has a pretty formidable defense, in my opinion. So I think it's going to be kind of a low-scoring affair, you know. And, and I, I do like Westbrook to get the ground game going, but I just don't think it'll be uh, the gaudy numbers. Now, I'm curious to know if maybe I'm just biased because I face Westbrook a lot this weekend. So right. I really want him to go Aren't we, not go down, but aren't just, we supposed to be non-biased when we talk about all this That's the point of playing in, in multiple leagues, I mean, but the, at the same time, it's time for the playoffs. Right. The, the so that's yeast, why I mentioned that. The yeast and royal flush are always non-biased. Big money on the other hand, I don't know about <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm being non-biased right here, and I think Brian Westbrook goes off in this game. <laughs> I don't uh, see how it's possible with a, such a strong Seattle defense that's going to be ramped up to stop only him. He goes when off against Westbrook, pretty much everybody, you beat though. the Eagles. Yeah. Against well, us, Westbrook had two touchdowns. Right. And, and, and don't, so if he did that against the number one run D in the league, don't you think he does that yeah, against Seattle? Yeah, but Jesse, this year we're not the number one run D in the league. You know, you can look at the numbers, and we are not, not uh, number one. Now, we have a great run defense. Yeah, Devin. But I'm <laughs> telling you that. Smoking a little All right. cheese. All right. Oh, come on. All right. You've got, you've got, you owe me, <laughs> I think, two lunches from earlier in the year. Here we go. So, Here we go. over under on Brian Westbrook, how many fanny, fantasy points? Uh, the over-under, I'd put at 15. I'll take the over. Okay. All right. All right. Another lunch? Yeah. I mean, I need it. Look at me. I'm wasting away to nothing over <laughs> here. Cincinnati traveling to Pittsburgh in a divisional game we can't wait to see on Sunday night. The Steelers are a team that's supposed to be elite, but here the last couple weeks, they've really struggled to put away teams like the Jets and the Dolphins. Granted, the field was just atrocious on Monday night, guys. But is this a sticky spot here for Pittsburgh, Easty? You know, Cincinnati got off pretty well last week against the Tennessee defense that was supposed to be very tough on them. Um, I think they're going to play well. I think that they always have played the Steelers well. I think in that game where Carson Palmer got hurt two years ago, I think they would have beat the Steelers that year. Um, so, yeah, I think they're going to struggle, but I think, I think it's going to have a lot of points. I think both teams are going to put up well over 24 points. Jeff, what about it you? It means a lot to me that Santonio Holmes has been injured. He's got the high ankle sprain, and that's a real nagging tough thing to get over. So if he's unable to stretch the field, it's going to uh, hamper Heinz Ward, who likes to work underneath. And, you know, to me, Heath Miller hasn't really developed enough as a playmaking type tight end to really keep things flowing when one of their wide receivers goes out. Right. So, and, and the other thing is, uh, talking about the, you know, the one-hit wonder type guy, Willie Parker is one touchdown Willie now. He's the, the best uh, back who never scores ever. <laughs> Thomas Jones has a claim to that thrown as well. Man. But yeah, but <laughs> Thomas Jones. Same with Lawrence Maroney. But, but Thomas Jones isn't also vying for the league lead in yardage. Right. So right. it's just like, you know, what do you do with that guy? He's got some value. So can you trade him? Well, then he pops for 200 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, I, I think you keep your key players in your lineup in this matchup. It's a, it's a night game. That field's going to be put back together. That field was absolutely atrocious. The, I think the worst playing conditions I've ever seen as far as from a grounds crew having a field yeah. ready to go. Just well, I mean, terrible. Is the, the new sod going to have time to grow roots with the cold temperatures and all that, or is it just going to be more of the same? Oof. 
It could be bad. I've beware. heard rumors of Steelers. Right they're gonna now. install beware. field turf between now and the playoffs, though. They're gonna install. Yeah, a whole well, that helps field. if they make it still. I think they will. Atlanta at St. Louis, the final matchup of this segment, guys. These two teams both absolutely suck. But because they suck, are there some possible fantasy plays here, Jeff? Well, I like Steven Jackson. I think he gets off in a nice wave this weekend. Um, their game is at home, and they're always going to be better. I'm, you know, curious to know what's up with Mark Bolger. Is he he's injured? He's out. Is he's, he's been not declared play, out so as that of this afternoon. Gus Farratt. I just don't think the team is going to be able to throw the ball quite as well. So you, you can't expect a whole lot out of Torrey Holt. He's like almost like a second round bust this season. Yeah, their their whole team's been in dismay all season. But I kind of tend to think that the balm that cures all ills. <laughs> I mean, realistically, that the that's, Falcons. that's yeah. the Falcons, right? Yeah, I think. I think uh, Gus Farad actually makes a decent play, and Isaac Bruce has actually played very well over the last few weeks. He's got uh, two touchdowns out of the last three weeks, and you know if you're if you're dealing with some injuries, maybe you were de depending on DJ Hackett as your third wideout or something. Isaac Bruce could make a decent fill in there. Stephen Jackson also also going to play very well, but Gus Farad to Randy McMichael is something that they've done in the past in Miami. Something they might lean on again nice. as well. It's so. an interesting take right there. So. Randy McMichael. Nice knowledge being dropped by the yeast. Well, we're dropping knowledge for you right here on Testosterone, our week 13 show. We want to take a brief moment right now to tell all you viewers at home, after the show is over, jump onto your computer, testosteronesports.com. We do this thing called the Fat Chat. We all go on there after the show is over. Jeff, we just... We love to talk to the junkies out there that watch the show. Yeah, starting the show, we wanted to do it to become friends with more people and to do it with our friends, and we've been able to kind of bridge that. And we, we use the fat chat to do it. When we started, we were live. We, we can't do that anymore, so we can get out in front of the whole Twin Cities area. Yep. So we use the chat to uh, meet some of those needs, and we'd love to meet you guys. And, and not only that, but we, we've been kind of batting around the idea of doing a week uh, an earlier in the week type chat. So come on there. It's, it's, it makes for a nice message board as well when people aren't in there. But uh, we're going to be doing something during the week, you know, after 8 p.m. at night. Yeah, yeah, and, and we also want to tell you a little bit. You've been seeing it stream across the bottom of the show. Every year for the Fantasy Testosterone Playoffs, we do this thing called the Fantasy Playoff Pick'em Challenge. So during week 14, 15, and 16, go onto the website, testosteronesports.com, pick all of the games, and the person who picks the most games correct for those four, three weeks, 14, 15, and 16, will be a guest panelist here during the Week 17 show. It's your chance to be a star. So log on to the website, testosteronesports.com, and we'll welcome another member of our panel that last week. Not only that, I'll give him the, what was supposed to be Dwayne Bowe Priest Holmes jersey that ended up <laughs> cursing him. You know, that put him out of the league forever. So you'll win an autographed Priest Holmes jersey. It won't be autographed by him. It'll be autographed by us. But you can have it anyways because, hell, I don't want it at this point. There you go. There you go. Well, we're going to say goodbye to Yeasty right now. He's got to dip out. Uh, he's ha had some dental work done of late. I'm, I'm questionable with a, with, a, with a wisdom tooth right ooh, now. Yeah. Ooh. But he's been dropping wisdom nonetheless, as has Jeff. I will be back with Jeff to finish out the show strong, coming back right after this testosterone fantasy sports. Thanks for checking it out.